Now, one of the things that I like very much about ARMA processes is that you can write any process as a first order model. You can take any armor being multivariate or univariate, and you can write it as a first order model where you just expand the dimension of that system to kind of enclose what you have in your model. So the generic model, basically you need the order to be P, the maximum of P and Q plus one. Why that? Well, the first column here are coefficients. Those are the matrix coefficients for the AR part. Then you have a identity matrix with a row of zeros below here. And then you have the state here. We'll get back to the understanding of that. And then the noise part here, you start with an identity matrix, matrix to get epsilon t. This corresponds in the multivariate setting to have a leading term of unity up here. And then you have the lagged epsilons that you want to keep in here. So to give a small example of that, if you have, an, say, an armor 2 comma 2 model, how would you represent that? First, we have to figure out how large a system do we have? Which one is greater, 2 or 2 plus 1? Well, that's the 2 plus 1 from here. So it is going to be a three-dimensional system. So let's just start to write it up. So you have Z1, comma t, Z2, comma t, Z3, comma t, equal to a matrix that in the first column here, or columns, but the column of matrices of coefficients, contains minus the AR coefficients since it's an AR2 model, then we only have two coefficient matrices, so the third one here will be a zero. Then we have to multiply this on Z1, T minus 1, Z2, T minus 1, and Z3, T minus 1. And in the rest of the matrix here, we should have a row of zeros at the bottom, and then we should have the identity matrix of dimension n minus 1 in there. So what we now need to add is the noise, where we have an identity matrix up here at first, and then we have the two moving average parameter matrices, and then we have epsilon t. So that's the representation of an ARMA 2,2 model. Now, in order to illustrate what these sets represent, then I will make a simpler model because I will do a moving average model of order two. What I will then, that means, how is that different from what we have up here? It's different in the sense that the phi one, phi two here, those are zeros in that case. Everything else is the same. So let's just try to build out this model. The easiest way is to go from the bottom and upwards from there. So let's start with Z3, comma T here. That's equal to zeros a lot of here. And then you have theta 2, epsilon T. Write that down here. Now we go upwards one step to get to Z2, comma T. Well, what is that equal to? That is equal to Z3, comma T at the previous time. Let's write that. Z3, comma t minus 1 plus theta 1 epsilon t. Now, what is Z3, comma t minus 1? Well, we have Z3 just down here. We just need to shift time. So this is equal to theta 2 epsilon t minus 1. And then we have from here plus theta 1 epsilon t. Now what is left is z1 comma t, which is equal to, let's look up here, it's a 1 times the previous z2, so it's z2 at time t minus 1, plus the identity matrix times epsilon t. 
And if we do the same that we did just before, now we take Z2, comma T, and shift time and plug that in. Theta 2, epsilon T minus 2, plus theta 1, epsilon T minus 1. So that's shifting what we have for Z2 down here, one time step backwards in time, plus epsilon T. And if we then add out here, yt equal to this, then we can look at this part here, and that part, and we have a traditional univariate MA1 model represented as a first order vector autoregressive model. The one thing one has to take a little bit care of is the variance structure out here because we have only a univariate or maybe a multivariate but not a to the same dimension as the system here variance structure so this is not a square matrix but that's one thing if you're going to implement this kind of model you need to pad with some zeros here to kind of mimic some noise signals that are not being used 